open your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter number two. I just want to look at a few things. I feel that this is encouraging tonight. We need to be encouraged. You know, there's times the word of God needs to step on our toes. And uh, that's all right. We need to do that. And we need to allow the Spirit of God to bring us to where we need to be. Because we need the convicting power of God to, to mold our life and bring us into a place that He wants us to be. But God doesn't always <coughs> hammer down on us. He encourages us as well. There's a balance. In fact, that balance makes everything just be in alignment. In Revelation chapter number 2, verse number 8, we're picking up reading where the angel... Uh, The Bible says unto the angel or the pastor of the church in Smyrna, write, these things says the first and the last. Amen. It's Christ. He's the beginning, is it to? He is the one who has created all things. He was there at creation. He's going to be the what there when all things are complete. Which was dead and is alive. I know your works and tribulation, and poverty. But you are rich. And I know the blaspheming of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear not of those things which ye shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto the end. And I will give you a crown of life. Be thou faithful unto the end, and I will give you a crown of life. Amen. There's a few things I want to look at tonight. And, 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 and with the mindset that this is what the Lord has certainly laid on my heart, but that the Lord would encourage you tonight. Amen. That you would find that you would find strength in the middle of your journey. Amen. Well, we look here at, at, at this uh, assembly or the, uh, the audience, the congregation of, uh, of, of Smyrna and uh, this uh, uh, city that, that, that is a, a, a deep golf city. In fact, uh, it is a place where Alexander the Great had rebuilt it and tried to make it a model city there uh, 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 in, in, in this this uh, Greek area. Uh, it was a place of wealth. It, it's, in fact, its name means beautiful. It was a beautiful city. Uh, but, but the word Smyrna itself is interesting. We find that, that this church, Smyrna, in the church of Philadelphia is the only church that did not receive condemnation. And uh, uh, let's see why the Lord was pleased with, with the church here at Smyrna. Smyrna itself, meaning suffering. Oh, this is so applicable for us tonight. Buy into it. Apply it to your life. Why does it mean suffering? Well, Smyrna was covered with myrrh trees. And uh, they were a shrub, shrubbery, shrubby type tree. I'm getting tongue tied again tonight. I did that this morning and tonight, huh? But the myrrh was very fragrant, even though it had a bitter taste. It itself was very fragrant. Uh, but but, but uh, the myrrh tree, it's interesting that uh, they would take and they would harvest that aromatic fragrance from the tree. And what they would do to that shrubby type tree, Sister Dietrich, is they would take and they would put an incision down that tree. And Sister Beth, at the bottom they would place either stones or there would be some type of woodwork that would catch the sap that would fall down. And then they would take that and they would utilize that for several things. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But could you imagine what that shrubby myrrh tree began to look like as they harvested the myrrh from it? And so they're putting incisions. Think about what that looks like. There are scars on all these trees. I mean, it looks pretty rough because it's being harvested of its fragrant sap. And so it, it will heal so drastically, but as it heals, it's it's lovely. It's 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 imperfect, Brother Craig. That's just the way it looks, Brother Gus. But as it's there, and so uh, this myrrh would 
solidify as it came onto the stone or upon the, the wood uh, uh, type of uh, uh, a container that would be caught in. And so that is what we can see from the myrrh tree is that there is blessing in suffering. Praise God. I love that. Because that is applicable for every one of us here tonight. Amen. That there is blessing in suffering. And, and myrrh was used for several things. It was used for perfumes. It was used as uh, uh, an ingredient. In fact, uh, uh, one of these bottles here, uh, I believe, uh, the, the, uh, 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 right here, some of our anointing oil actually has myrrh in it. The high priest, they would use it to fragrance. Uh, uh, that uh, anointing oil, the high priest, it was used for purification for women. It was used for embalming. In fact, probably if you would think really hard, you would think, why, why does this murder ring a bell in my ear? Because it was one of the gifts that the three, the, oh, one of the three gifts that the wise men brought to baby Jesus. Wow, I almost gave you three wise men there. <laughs> but three gifts. And so, Listen for a second what all those gifts represented as they brought. It brought that when they brought it, it, the first, the gold represented to Jesus, it was a picture of his royalty. The frankincense was a picture of, of, of his deity and his purity. However, are you hanging in there listening tonight? The myrrh was a picture of his suffering. If you remember right, you remember that, uh, that, that, that uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he was given that wine that was mang uh, uh, mingled with myrrh. And it acted as a painkiller. But I want to tell you something. There's coming a day when Jesus is coming back in all of his royalty, in all of his deity and purity. But he will never again return to this world to suffer. Amen. He paid the ultimate price. For sin, And so here is this church at Smyrna. Their name is derived from, from the mercury here. And it's what kind of uh, gave them their, their, their name and, and, and was their trademark and their symbol. It represents that of suffering. But I want to tell you that in the middle of suffering, there is beauty. Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. But the good news is he suffered and died to purchase our never, never, never dying soul. Amen. From the eternity lost, he purchased us that we may live with him forever. Praise God. Thank you. So we look and we see about this church at Smyrna. And there are three things that seem to be to them suffering. He said this, he said, I know your tribulation. Now just bear with me because I am getting to a point, but it takes me a while to go there. He said, I know your suffering. The Greek word for, not that I'm a scholar, but these are things that I've read and, and that are interesting to me. The Greek word for tribulation is thylipsis, which means this. It means pressure. Now sometimes when we think about tribulation, the very last thing we would think about, Brother David, is pressure. But it's very interesting that, that uh, the Lord said, I know your, 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 your suffering, I know your tribulation. But the word pressure that is used for tribulation, thylipsis, Sister Isley, is this, is that some of these Christians were being persecuted. We'll talk a little later that there was five million of them that were probably put to death. And Brother Craig, they would take a large stone and they would place it upon this individual and it would crush him. The pressure of it would crush him. There are times in our lives where we go through areas where the pressure is on us that it feels like it's about to crush us. Amen. The Lord says something to us. He says, hey church, I know your tribulation. I know your pressures. I know those things are, are on your shoulders. I know those things that, that seem to be working against you. Uh, uh, it was terrible. A pressure that, that they would put these large stones upon these Jews by the Romans because they wanted to persecute them and kill them. And then 
the second thought of that is this. Is that in these Roman ancient times, they have what was known as threshing floors. Now I know we go down to Walmart, Brother Dennis, and we buy some flour. Or you got the boyers or wives or whatever you shop. You go and you buy some flour, but that's not how it was these days. They knew the process of getting there. Just generally, if I don't even think about the process. The process was this. It was that the wheat was thrown into a threshing floor. And on this threshing floor, there was a cart that did not have wheels, but it had rollers. And the rollers would roll in such a, a, a synchronized way as they had pieces of stone attached to them, things that would grasp. As, as the rollers would roll, it would help to separate the husk of the wheat from the grains of the wheat. In fact, these rollers were called tribulos. Wow. Doesn't sound like any other word that we may be using in our English language. Like tribulation. We will go through the tribulums of life. We will go through the tribulations of life. But you see, when we do go through difficult times in our lives as believers, it's very important for us to realize that when we go through tribulation, when we go through hard times, it isn't that God is wanting to crush us. It isn't that, 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 that God is allowing things to happen for our harm. But what it is, Brother Justin, is God is saying, wait a second, I am separating the bad from the good, and I want the good to be magnified in your life. Amen. I want the very best in you to be what comes out. That is why I allow you to go through tribulation. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Sometimes we think, God, why do you allow me to go through this? Why are these hard times? Why are these difficult moments? Why does it feel like I'm under uh, the tribulum of uh, the crushing mill? Uh, why does it feel like I have this pressure? Because God wants to display the very best that's inside of you. Amen. That everyone may see it. Amen. And that is why we go through difficult times. Amen. Church of Smyrna, you're going through all this persecution. But be reminded, I want the world to see the very best that you have in you. And it's through me. Hallelujah. And then he said this. He said, not only do I know your tribulation, but I know your poverty. Now, when we think about poverty, there's two different things that we can think about. We can think about that work, 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 and hardly have anything. You know, really live in a poverty level. But that wasn't the case here. These believers had nothing because the Romans stripped them of everything because of their faith. I see your poverty. See, the people here in Smyrna, they were hated for several reasons because they were not loyal to the Caesar of Rome. They were loyal to God. These folks, uh, they were considered atheists because they didn't worship Caesar as God. They were accused of being cannibals even because they participated in the Lord's Supper. And those Romans didn't understand what communion was all about. So they considered them to be cannibals. And, and they were accused of, of, of being homebreakers uh, because uh, they, they loved God. And, and uh, uh, those who, who uh, were so enticed by the Romans, uh, they, they broke off relation with any of their family that become saved. You broke your family up because of your salvation. So they were in dire poverty. And then he said, I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. And he said, I know that you're being blasphemed about. Blasphemed here is being slandered. There's all kinds of bad things being told about them. You see, the devil, he is the father of the lies, the Bible says. And he will do whatever he can do to discourage and get us down. 
even install my lights. But Jesus said, don't fear any of those things which you suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. You will be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite things, if there's anyone that I remember from church history and Bible school, it's a man named Polycarp. I love Polycarp's story. Because Polycarp was told to renounce Jesus Christ. Polycarp said this, 86 years have I served Christ, and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who has saved me? They told him to recant or he was going to be burned. He was going to be put to death, and his final words was, I am a Christian. Be faithful, even to death. And then the Word of God says something that I love, and this is what I want us to focus on tonight, <coughs> for just a few moments. And I will give thee I've gone through tribulation. I have been lied and cheated about. I have been blasphemed. I have lived in poverty. Maybe there's some that never get the elevation that maybe you should at your job because of being Christian. Maybe you, whatever that case may be. Maybe maybe there's sometimes choices we make even to serve God will cost us in our pocketbook because we prioritize where our time will be at. No, I give to God. God says, I see all that. He said, I want you to be faithful. Amen. I want you to be faithful. And even unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Amen. There's a couple different crowns uh, in the Greek language. One of them is uh, a, di a diadema, uh, which we know as diadem in our language. Amen. It is a royal crown. And then there is a Stephanos. Amen. That crown is a crown which is given to a winner of athletic games. You would see that back in those Roman Olympics where they would weave these uh, green leaves together. They would be crowned with that. And it was even on Caesar's money. You can look at even on money from other countries. You may notice that crown that is around individual's heads that is made out of leaves. Amen. Uh, uh, it's so important for us to know, amen, that yes, like that one who, who ran a race for the Stephanos, uh, for that crown that is that is green, amen, it, it represented uh, eternal life, uh, that, 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 that greenery, amen, uh, we are in a race as well, amen, that is for everlasting life, amen, yes, I want the Stephanos, amen, but I want the diadem, amen, that King of Kings and Lord of Lords is going to crown me with a crown someday, amen, the tribulation we go through, the poverty we go through, the blaspheming me we may go through. Amen. The word of God reminds us. Amen. God sees us. Amen. He sees everything that we go through. He doesn't come with condemnation, but He comes with encouragement to say, keep on running the race. Keep on being faithful. I know you're suffering, but in the middle of your suffering, it's a fragrance. Amen. I'm not doing it to crush you, but I'm doing it to bring out the best in you. Amen. As you are faithful to the end. Amen. There is a crown of life for the one who is faithful. Amen. Not a temporary crown. Amen. But an eternal crown. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. A crown. A crown. Amen. Someday we will all uh, will stand. Uh, believers will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. As we are there, we will receive crowns. 
I'm encouraged tonight, even as a pastor, but challenged as a pastor. You can read in the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 5, verse number 2 through 4. And the word of God says to feed the flock of God. Amen. Uh, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. There's a responsibility even for the pastor. Amen. You be faithful and God will reward you. God help me tonight. But for the believer, I need to say this. That there is a crown of righteousness. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 4, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but all of them that will also love his appearing. I want to tell you something tonight, child of God. Amen. Our expectancy should be. For the returning of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our expectancy drives us to living that righteous life. Amen. As we were singing tonight, how great thou art. Amen. Oh God, you are great. And one day you're coming back for me. It's a time to purify myself. It's a time to remind myself that I need to be expectantly awaiting the Lord's return. Amen. Because all those that love the Lord's return, the Bible says to them, are going to be given a crown of righteousness. Amen. It should be the motivation. It should be what motivates us in our life as a believer. Amen. The Lord is coming back. Amen. I can't wait to see Him. I long to see Him. I love for that moment when I can see Him face to face. Amen. He's coming back. I need to tell you, that's why tonight for me as a believer, amen, I believe in the pre-tribulation, amen, because he's coming back. Uh, we don't know when in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, amen, it's going to count folks off guard. If it's in the middle, we'll know. If it's at the end of the tribulation, we'll know. Amen, I'm not looking for the tribulation, amen, I'm looking for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, as we love and long for that return, God has promised that there is a crown of righteousness for that individual. Amen. There is a crown of life. The Bible says in James 1.12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to him that love him. Amen. This crown of righteousness. Keep being faithful. I know that we can go to the trial period. We can go through those moments the Lord knows. Amen. Be faithful. I like what 1 Thessalonians says. Paul is writing. And the devil was blocking the way, making the, that he can't get to where he longs to be. And he writes and he says, For what is our hope or our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Paul said, you know what? There's coming a day when every temptation is going to be laid down. There's coming a day when every block from the enemy is going to be laid down. And all those who have won souls to the Lord, amen, there is a crown of rejoicing. Amen. The devil can try to block things here. Amen. He can certainly get in the schedules, can he? Amen. He can try to hinder. He can try to discourage. Amen. But I know that there's a crown of rejoicing. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, the Bible says, uh, Know ye not that they which run for a race run all, oh, but one receiveth the prize. Amen. And he goes on down to say, uh, in, in chapter, number, uh, chapter number 9, verse number 26, I therefore run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under subjection, lest that any means when I preach to others, I myself should become a castaway. Amen. Uh, we run for a crown incorruptible. He says in verse number 25, Amen. One day we're going to get a crown, not that faith but one that is incorruptible. The Bible says that there's coming a day where we are going to be in the presence of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord as those that are on the throne we will cast as fate. I need to tell you 
that for us as believers, we have a hope in front of us that we need to encourage ourselves. That Jesus is coming again. Amen. He's coming again. He's coming again. The other night I looked at the sky, it was so amazing. Throughout this week, I've seen several things. I've seen the blue of the sky, pink of clouds, and it's mesmerized me. My wife and I had a class yesterday. We were driving home. I said, look at those clouds. There were great big clouds in the sky, but no, there were clouds. Just kind of, I had to down low. I wonder what the sky will look like when the day comes back. Amen, one day, Brother Craig, he's going to split the sky. Brother Justin, he's going to come back. Amen, riding. Amen, on a horse of triumph, not with defeat. Amen. I want you to know tonight, amen, he's coming back. Amen. The Bible says in Revelation 4.10, the 420 elders fall down before him that set up on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. Amen. There's coming a day when we're going to stand before the King of Kings that's going to live forever and ever and we'll be able to cast our crowns down as throne. Tonight I can tell you, we get weary. Get tired. Sometimes we think, how much more can I take? Sometimes it feels like the rollers are rolling over. Sometimes it seems like another incision that just seems to mar who we are. When God says all the time, it's your favorite. I have so many purposes for the incision. I have so much more purpose to bring out the very best that's inside. Allow <coughs> my plan to work. Be faithful even unto death because I have a crown for you. What would it be tonight to get so close? One more time with the rolls on the top. But I will be faithful until I receive it. Tonight I want us to do this. Sister Beth and Sister Holly would come. I don't know what it's in the celebration hymnal, but in the old hymnal on page 206, I want us to turn to Amazing Grace. So I don't care what verse you sing. But I want us to start out on that first number one. Sing about amazing grace. And then we'll jump down to that last verse. When we've been there 10,000 years, <coughs> bright shining as the sun. Amen. We'll have no less space to sing his praise than when we first began. If I could do anything to you tonight, I'm going to breathe in the Word of God. Be faithful. In the middle of the incisions, be faithful. In the middle of the tribulation, the uh, turbulence rolling over top of you, be faithful. God's bringing out the best. Be faithful, even unto death. Because God has a crown for each of us. A crown incorruptible, a crown of rejoicing, amen, a crown of righteousness, amen, when we stand before the Lord and we're judged, amen, can you imagine, Brother Craig, what it's going to be? I, mean, I can imagine what Queen Elizabeth feels like all those years being queen. What must that be like? She's getting older. Seriously, I was thinking about that this week. She probably thinks, man, I've had a good life. I've been blessed. You know, what a lot of people have. But it's temporary. Though 97 years she's lived in royalty, Brother Dennis, it will come to an end. But for us, Sister Dietrich, when he puts those crowns upon our heads, 
you've been faithful. I've seen your tribulation. I've seen your poverty. I've seen the blasphemy you've gone through. The devil has lied about us and against us. You've been faithful. Here's the crown. Brother Craig, we may be there for a thousand years, but we'll have no less days, Mr. Tina, to sing his praise than when we first began. Talk about some depth. That's deep. Amen.